All right, good morning. This is Nicole Whitlock with Econ Sellers. And this is the weekly econ planning session where we actually talk about your game plan for the week. So we're going to step through a few things. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them to get organized, get focused, get consistent in their business. If that is you, I'm here for you. You can schedule a free 20-minute coaching session. But before we get into that, I am going to actually suggest that you go and download the checklist for today's discussion. So our topic before we go through the checklist, the weekly planning checklist, is the 13 different e-commerce methods that exist out there in the universe. There's actually more than that, but this is sort of streamlined down to those that uh, want to be entrepreneurs and want to explore this e-commerce thing. Here's all the ways that are common that you can get into the game if you want to become an entrepreneur. So if you're working a nine to five, is how you can jumpstart your business. So we're going to get into these 13, but before we get into the 13, I encourage you to go download the daily, weekly, and monthly planning checklist. You can go directly into the e-commerce planning Facebook group. Once you go into the e-commerce planning Facebook group, you can click on files. Once you click on files, you can download the three PDFs that are there, giving you the opportunity to follow along as we go through the weekly planning session. I also want to encourage you to go grab your notebook because if you're going to be part of the weekly planning session, it's about 45 minutes long. And we're going to talk about all the things you need to do to plan for a successful week because it's the last full week in October. So and with that being said, we're live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. So you can join us in either one of those two. So let's get started. So these are common business models that, again, those who want to get started as an entrepreneur can do. Now, there's more than just this. But again, if you currently have a nine to five or you're unemployed or you're, you know, whatever it is that you got going on, maybe you're retired. Here's some ways in which you can get into the e-commerce game. So the first one is arbitrage. There's retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. That's where you purchase a product on one platform or at one store and you sell it on a marketplace on a different marketplace so an example of that would be maybe i go out and i do some research on baby blankets and so i decide that i'm going to either go online and buy some baby blankets or i am going to go to a store and i see some baby blankets that are on clearance or on sale discount whatever i purchase those baby blankets again i've already done a little bit of pre-research and i'm going to list and sell those baby blankets on another platform maybe i'm selling them on amazon which is a marketplace maybe i'm selling them on ebay maybe i'm selling them on etsy just depends but again i'm purchasing a product um, and selling it on another platform. These are resellers. They are reselling products. And pretty much, like, I'm just going to say, all of us are pretty close to resellers. It doesn't matter what method of e-commerce, like you're purchasing something from one place and selling on another platform, unless you're making it yourself. So this is commonly known as flippers or resellers or that kind of stuff. Well, flippers are more thrifters. But anyway, so that is an e-commerce method. It's a common one. You can make a lot of money. Uh, you know, I know a person who does RAOA and he clears over a million dollars every year doing that. So and he doesn't have a large team. So I'm just saying some people think that it's dead. It is not dead. And if you go to selling on Amazon, uh, Amazon has like sell on Amazon.com, I think is what it's called. If you go there and look, you'll see that they mentioned reselling as a method of selling products on their platform. So doing reselling or, you know, doing arbitrage, you, there's many different platforms in which you can do that on. And it's a fun uh, way to uh, find products at a discount price. People will sometimes do couponing. They'll go out or they'll use their apps to get discounted price or cash back on things just so they can increase their ROI return on investment on products that they acquire. So again, this time of the year, perfect time to like buy candy because we got Halloween, we got Christmas. And so candy is one of those that you can go out and go to the grocery store and do retail arbitrage, buy candy and then sell your candy on another platform. And people are buying candy from online. So another method of e-commerce is wholesale. In addition to that, there's also liquidation, also part of the wholesale family. So wholesale is buying a product from a wholesaler warehouse, you know, a big distributor, 
and you can buy it. There's going to be sometimes minimum order quantities. There's other things. You probably have to set up an account or establish an account with them. They probably have a catalog of products that you can ser search through. Liquidation. In some cases, liquidation is where wholesalers have gotten inventory. Maybe they didn't. Um, uh, maybe the inventory was not purchased and or acquired. I'm going to give you an example. Um, earlier this year, we've been talking a lot about Kohl's and Target, about them saying, look, we don't want the inventory that we ordered from you. So that was originally ordered from a manufacturer's created. So it goes out to the wholesale community. And so it probably gets pushed down to some of the liquidators. And a lot of the liquidators are wholesalers as well. And so that inventory is going to be out in that space for people to acquire at a deep, deep discount because it was already ordered, already produced, and somebody just needs to get their money back. So again, liquidations, you can find liquidations where um, when people have returns from like Walmart or they have returns from Target or Home Depot or Lowe's, you can buy inventory that was previously ordered in bulk and then it was returned or it was not accepted. And a liquidator may have that inventory and they can sell it to you and discount at a discounted price. So wholesaling, you're probably paying, you know, again, a wholesale, regular wholesale rate. Whereas within the wholesale community, you can also purchase inventory at a lower price. Two sort of simple, different uh, business models. Uh, but again, there are wholesalers that actually, when they have an abundance of inventory and overflow of inventory, they push it down the liquidators and they can get rid of it for them. And within that liquidation space, there's some other stuff that's happening, like returns and stuff like that. So that is a way in which you can acquire inventory and get it at a discount price and be able to sell it. Or you can order it in bulk and get it at a good price and be able to resell it on another marketplace. Another e-commerce method is drop shipping. Drop shipping is there are drop shipping websites. A lot of them are sometimes wholesale websites. And so drop shipping is where you again you are um, you have an account with a drop ship supplier and you they normally have a catalog very similar and they are willing to send the product to your customer for you instead of you acquiring it and you shipping it to the customer or using some other method to get it to your customer. So there's products that you'll find on drop shipping websites like watches and and um, I, you know kitchen appliances and there's just so many different products uh, including like beds and furniture like there's a lot of products in which you can drop ship and so Alibaba and AliExpress is a well-known drop shipping website, but there are so many others that are available where you can acquire inventory or sorry, not acquire it, but you're actually finding inventory on a website yeah, and they are going to be shipping that, cut, that product directly to your customer for you. So what you're doing is when you find that inventory and there's going to be a price for it, you're going to list it on your website or list it on another marketplace. When somebody buys it from that marketplace, then you will have that product shipped directly to the customer instead of you shipping it to them or there's already an integration in place so that as soon as that purchase happens on that platform that marketplace it's automatically shipped to your customer so drop shipping is a way to get started it's also a way to get started without spending some uh money as much money um, i will tell you you can there's a lot of different ways. We'll probably talk about that one day where we talk about which one is the most cost effective. But again, you can get started in drop shipping uh, with little money. You can get started with arbitrage with little money on wholesale. You're going to spend a little bit of money. So just giving you that white label. Um, white label is where there is a product that you found that you like. There's a bunch of white label suppliers out there and it's a product where they make it in mass. So I'm going to use an example of wine. Um, the wine that you see at like Costco, the Kirkland's wine, that particular wine is like a white label brand. And what that means is whoever's making that wine, they've agreed to be able to redistribute it out under multiple brands. So that particular wine will have different labels on it and it's all the same wine, but people are making a lot of money because of the fact that they're going to sell their own brand. So it's going out there, finding a product where you can slap your name and your label on that particular product and make it your own brand. Now, in some cases with the white label, they'll also 
let you make some minor adjustments to the product as well, customizing it. And so some people will call that private label. But again, you're going out, you're finding a product that already exists in the universe, and you're slapping your brand, your label on it, and calling it your own. Okay? And you're making money off of that. Um, private label. In most cases, a true private label is actually creating a product from, from scratch, from a manufacturer, working with a manufacturer to design, develop a product that is unique, that doesn't exist in the, uni in the universe, or a modified version of a product that may already exist in the universe. And it is truly custom. So in private label, whether it's the development and you're actually going out and getting um the trademark for it and you've got specs and there's patents and all of that fun stuff again that's true forms of private label whereas a lot of people do white label today and they call it private label and it's again just modifying an existing product that's out there so if you're a person that's an inventor or creator something that you've designed and developed you have an idea you probably want to create a private label product for it and uh, that is a method of e-commerce that you can use. Now, you make a lot of money in private label. You can make a lot of money in white label. Um, both of those are going to require some investment. Then there's print on demand. Within print on demand, there's so many different models within print on demand. So there's print on demand of physical products like T-shirts, coffee mugs, totes, uh, wall art, pillows, that kind of stuff, socks, leggings, phone cases. I could go on and on and on print on demand where you're taking a particular product that's a blank slate and you're superimposing an amazing design or a simple design onto that particular product. Then there's also digital products that you can do for print on demand within digital products. These are digital downloads. It can be anything from recipes to uh, planner sheets for to go into a notebook or accounting sheets or things like that where you print off something, little posters that you can put on the wall. And so it's it's a downloadable um products that you create and you can download it. Then the, within there, there's also um, sort of like producing of books and notebooks. And um, so sort of most people will call it KDP, but again, you don't necessarily have to do KDP. KDP is specific to Amazon, but again, it's producing your own books, whether it's cre creating your own planners, creating your own low content books, creating your own workbooks, coloring books, that kind of stuff. So print on demand goes in so many different places in so many different ways. And there's so much that you can do with print on demand. There's print on demand watches. There's print on demand footballs. Like people just, the, the gamut of print on demand is just like unlimited. And so again, taking an existing product and putting a design on it and calling it your own. Um, another way, I will say this, print on demand is a low point of entry when it comes to e-commerce. So if you don't have a lot of capital, a lot of money, it's a great way to get started without spending a lot of money. Then there's books, selling books, books, like people will sell used books. They'll get them from, they'll acquire them from a library. They'll go to uh, third party bookstores and they will sell them online. So reselling books, reselling old magazines, like, uh, or old newspapers, all of that Selling of books, there's a lot of money that can be made and reselling books. A lot of people like have moved to digital, but there are people who really like to have that hard book where they can sit down and flip the pages and touch the book and experience it. So there's a lot of money to be made in selling books and how you acquire them. There's so many different ways, and we talk about it many times in Inside of Ecom Sellers Academy. Then there's thrifting. Thrifting is where you're a person, like there's a lot of people that are hunters of stuff. Whether you're going to thrift shops, whether you're going to garage sales, whether you're going to antique malls, whether you're going uh, to um, the flea market, swap meets, however you acquire the, um, the inventory, you're finding those one-of-a-kind pieces, estate sales, all of those that are unique and specific and people make a lot of money off of finding those things that nobody else has found or those things that don't exist anymore, aren't being made again, and they flip them or sell them on platforms where you have the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, there's so many stories that Kelly has shared where she's talked about that she's found some amazing pieces of whatever, whether it's jewelry or clothes, you know, they're collectibles or antiques, and then she resells it and like sells it for like $300. It's crazy bananas. Like I got this for 50 cents and I sold it for $300. So there's a lot of money into finding those one of a kind gems or those rare finds that exist out there in the universe. You can make a lot of money doing that. 
Then there's live selling. That's number nine. And so live selling is, there's so many platforms right now that are doing live selling. So live selling for, uh, I think like one of the platforms called Whatnot. There's another one that's called, well, Whatnot is more of an auction, but it's still a live selling. And then there is a comment sold where you're taking your products and you're broadcasting live, showing it. It's sort of like your own version of the home shopping network. If that's the best way to describe it, it is your own version of the home shopping network. And there's a lot of different platforms that have some live component of selling, including Amazon, because Amazon has Amazon live if you've never paid attention. And so you're showcasing or sharing an actual product that you're holding up, you're talking about it. And again, if you want to think of it like your own version of Home Shopping Network, that's a great way to think of it. And within that space, there's some that are auction type of platforms or formats. And there are those that are very close to like the Home Shopping Network where people can buy things in quantity if you have multiples of it or you may have a single of it. Again, one of those that you can get involved in. Then there's mobile apps, not to be confused with common sold or whatnot, but mobile apps are more like your Macari, your Poshmark, your OfferUp, your Five Mile, your Vented, uh, your Depop, where people are taking pictures of products that they have in their house. Now, we will not call them products initially because they might just be things that, hey, I bought this jacket two years ago, the tags are still on and I never wore it. So it's some cases, people are just looking for some quick cash. They want to flip some stuff. They got some stuff around their house that they're not using, not touching, not doing anything with. And so they are selling them. And then there are other people that are very strategic and they are buying inventory in bulk or they're creating products or they have products that they're cross-listing from other platforms. And so selling them on these mobile apps is another way to get going. Uh, initially, when I thought of mobile apps, I thought of the online version or the mobile version of a garage sale. And initially that was really the thing. It's like everybody's got extra stuff in their house. They're trying to declutter. Let's get rid of it. And so that was a common thing, but it has become beyond that. And so initially, if you want to think of it as your like mobile version of a garage sale, you can think of it that way. But again, it has expanded to become so much more. And it is another way for people to get their products in front of customers because different customers are on different platforms looking for different products. The next one is subscriptions. So subscriptions. There's so many different subscription boxes. Subscriptions have been around for a little while, but they, you know, they've come and gone or they've not really come and gone. They've, they've kind of picked up a little bit where people are really interested in uh, curated subscription boxes. There's unique things that are in them. It's a collection of niche products that are specific to that niche and that particular audience is very interested in those things. Now, if you think about it back in the day, like people used to get like the jelly of the month. <laughs> if you watch the Griswolds and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, they got the jelly of the month. <laughs> so it was a subscription box that was sent to the person who's like, oh yeah, I'm getting jelly every single month. Yay, thank you. And some people are really interested in that. But again, this has expanded into so many other cool things where you can get subscription boxes around planners and you can get subscription boxes around things that improve your health and to make your life better or subscription boxes for activities for your kids to be engaged in. So there's so many different subscription boxes. And again, you as a seller wanting to get into this game, like if you are really good at matching things that make sense that go together and you like curating that type of stuff, you should probably consider, you know, creating a subscription box business. The next one is makers. There are a lot of people who can make some stuff. They can bake cakes and they can do woodwork. I will say that is not my gift. As my friend always says, that is not her ministry. So if you're a maker, if you're a person who is a really good creator, you're a crafter, you're all of these things, you probably can make some amazing stuff to sell on different platforms and make a lot of money. So again, for some people, this is just a hobby that's turned into cash. Like maybe they made some chairs and then one of the friends like, you should sell this. And then it becomes a thing. And that's fine. That's a cool way to get started in the e-commerce space. And then there's services. A lot of people um, 
Now, there are services and within services, like we could take a deep, 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 deep dive into all the different ways in which services uh, can be an e-commerce business. But I'm going to name two that are not related in any kind of way. So there's the bigger service of maybe you're a person that maybe cleans houses or you do lawns. And so you're listing your particular services on a specific marketplace platform. People can find you and then they buy your services. There's the other type where you're just looking for a quick gig, you're looking for some money. So there's platforms, again, marketplace specific niche platforms, where maybe you are a person that's also a photographer, but you want to sell those extra pictures onto a platform. So there's a platform where you can upload your pictures, you take pictures randomly around the town, around your life, and you upload them to that specific platform, and they will pay you money for the pictures in which you have uploaded to their platforms. So again, you already have a service, but you got some overflow of it, and you upload them to different platforms. If you're a person that, you know, you want to make some extra money taking pictures, you want to make some extra money like doing errands, there's all types of things, all types of platforms in which you can do that. There's, there's all kinds of mobile apps. So it's another way to get started by selling your services two different ways um, on out into the universe. So we talked about 13 different business models, There's a lot of like different business models, and each one of them have different specific, unique or platforms where you can either sell these things or do these things. And it's just, again, another way to get going. A, a, a great example of services is like Uber, like it's, it's another way. And within Uber, you can get meals delivered, grocery shopping done and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I don't know what else you can do on Uber anymore. I just stopped looking. Um, <laughs> So with those business models, each one of them is different in their own right. And when I say that, like some of these business models are business to consumer where you've actually like established a, a business. And so you've created your own online business. You've established it. Maybe you're a seller on Amazon or you're a seller on, on eBay or Walmart or Google Shopping or something or um or you've got a Shopify store. And so you are selling directly to the consumer. That's called B2C. Now, we're not going to cover all of the B2C. C2, like, we're not going to cover all of them. There's a lot of them, and we're just going to cover four. Um, then there's B2B, where you're selling your services to another business. So your business is selling your services to another business. And that's considered B2B. Then there is C2C, consumer to consumer. So a lot of like the mobile apps would be considered closer to consumer to consumer because the consumer is going through their house, finding some stuff. They're going to go put it on offer up and sell it to another consumer. So again, that's an example of consumer to consumer, which is C2C. And then there's C2B, which is consumer to business. So again, selling your product. I use the example of a person who takes a lot of random pictures. You have an overflow of pictures. You upload them to a website that wants to buy all of your extra pictures. So again, that's consumer to business. And that website is going to sell or distribute or do whatever they want to with those pictures. You just, they gave you some cash for them. So that's a lot of different common business models uh, that may apply to the different e-commerce methods that we talked about. So I hope this information is helpful to you. We're going to continue to talk about the different uh, business models, different ways in which you can get started in the e-commerce game, which platforms and all of that. So stay tuned to this series as we talk about them um, and let someone else know about them so you can tune in for the next one. So if you're ready to turn up the dial on your business and get laser focused, then I encourage you to get the Econ Planner. The 2023 My Econ Planner is available to you right now. You can go over to myecomplanner.com. It is the ultimate e-commerce planner. It was created for sellers by sellers. And you can use that to completely change the trajectory of your business in 2023. So go grab the ultimate e-commerce planner at myeconplanner.com. Get organized, get focused, get consistent in your business and use it to help you to make the kind of money you've always wanted to make. If you are looking for a little bit of help, support on your e-commerce journey, you can definitely schedule a free coaching session by going to ecomsellers.com, clicking on free resources and scheduling a free 20 minute coaching session. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions that you might have and be able to help you on this journey. 
I enjoy you to I invite you to get support, sorry, on your e-commerce journey by joining Ecom Sellers Academy. You can go to www.ecomsellersacademy.com. It's terribly affordable. It's $17.99 a month to help you kickstart your e-commerce business and get going on this journey. So go join Ecom Sellers Academy. There's a lot of different perks in what you get for being an Ecom Sellers Academy member. And now we're about to get into the weekly planning session. So if you didn't have your notebook, go grab it now. If you, you know, you got to go find a pen, make sure your pen is working. <laughs> if you're going to do this online, then open up your computer so you're ready to go. Again, we're live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. So, you know, jump in and let's get going on your weekly plan. So afterwards, if there's anything you want to talk about when it comes to your business or anything that we talked about today from a planning standpoint or any other e-commerce related topic, any e-commerce related topic, you can join us on Clubhouse. So you can join the e com Sellers Club and jump in and join the conversation. Let's chat. Let's talk about your business. Let's talk about where you are. So I am going to now go over to the weekly planning checklist. If you didn't have a chance to go download it, download it now. It's inside of the e-commerce planning Facebook group. You go to the file section and download it. So let's get going. I have to drink some water because it's, now this is probably going to be like 40 minutes. So I got to drink some water real quick and let's get into it. So the purpose of the weekly planning session is to help you to be intentional every single day in your business, to help you to plan for your future success. Because if you start to get consistent in your business, you actually will become successful in your business. And if, if you just get organized, if you get consistent, if you get focused, if you gain some momentum, and then once you start gaining momentum, then you're motivated to keep going. So the goal of the weekly planning session is to help you to plan out your strategy. We believe that incremental improvements implemented over time can reshape the future of your business. So everything that you plan out today for next week can actually change the trajectory of your business. It could actually improve it. It could help you to grow it and to build it, to become whatever it is that you visualize originally, the reason why you got into this e-commerce game. So I talked about so many different e-commerce methods. It doesn't matter what your e-commerce method is. What we're going to talk about today applies to all of those methods. Okay. It applies to all of them. In addition to that, um, we're going to um, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to first build out our weekly template. And then after we build out our weekly template, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to build out the actual plan for next week. So when we talk about our weekly template, in the middle of the e-commerce planning checklist is a like mock schedule. And so when I talk about a weekly template, it is more of what is it that I'm doing every single day in my week? Next week is the last week of October, so you probably had some goals that you established for the month of October. Those goals might be, my goal is to get a thousand new listings up by the end of the month of October. So if I do the math and I sort of divide that by four to do simple math, that's 250 listings every single week. To break down those 250 listings every single week, I might divide that by five days in a week, six days in a week, seven days in a week to determine how many listings I need to create every single day to accomplish that goal of 250 for the week, a thousand for the month. Okay. So we're breaking down the bigger goal because the bigger goal is always overwhelming. It's like, oh, this is not attainable. And we're going to bring it all the way down to something that is strategically attainable based on what you've determined you can invest in your business. When I'm talking about investments, that means your investment of either time, resources, money. One of the three you're going to have to do. So if you don't have a lot of money, you're probably going to invest more time into your business. If you have money, then you're probably going to either hire some people or if you have resources, maybe you're using tools to help simplify your listing process, but ultimately to get to that goal of 250 for the week. So we break everything down so that it is something that is easily attainable and less overwhelming. And we're just doing this little by little. Now, if a thousand wasn't your number, you want something more simplistic. Like I just want to create five listings every single week. So five listings every single week, five days a week is 25 listings. Seven days a week is 35 listings. By the end of the month, you have a certain number that you're going to get to. 
at the end of the month, maybe it is 100 listings instead of 1,000. So you feel a little more comfortable. That's more easily attainable. And we can do that. Or maybe it's a bigger number. But my point is we're breaking everything down so that it is actually attainable and something that we don't become overwhelmed by. As part of that, when we create this template, the intention of the template is like, hey, there's some basic con components of being a, an, e well, an entrepreneur and an e-commerce seller. You know, there's some basic components. There's things like, I got to create listings. So there's going to be some level of some listing activity in your life. And oh, by the way, listing is an income producing activity. So as a seller, regardless of my e-commerce method, whether I'm creating products from scratch because I'm a great, I don't know, I, I can build or make neat things or I'm really good at crochet. I still have to create a listing for that because nobody knows that I have that gift or that I have these amazing products to sell. So listings have to exist in the universe. Okay, so that's one of these components of being a seller or being an e-commerce e entrepreneur. Two, maybe just maybe I got to get this product to them somehow. However, you fulfill the order. So somebody buys it. So first I create the listing. Somebody's got to buy it. I got to fulfill the order. Whether I'm shipping it myself, somebody's shipping it for me. I got to have some shipping related activities or fulfillment related activities on my agenda. Even if I'm drop shipping, I should be going out there to check to make sure that the orders were actually fulfilled by whoever the drop shipper is. So again, it's still part of the process. And by confirming that, that means I get to keep the money. Okay. Because when some people buy it and if they don't get their product, you got to give the money back. But when people buy it and they do get their product, you get to keep the money. And that's ultimately at the end of the day, that's the thing that you want. So that is sort of an income producing activity. It's really an income retention activity because you get to retain the money. Okay. So those two components are things that you should have somewhere on your schedule on a regular basis throughout the week. Those are things that make you money or, get, or allow you to keep money. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Then there are some other things that you should probably be doing in this business. So I should probably have some level of product research related activity. And you could be doing a lot of it or you can be doing just a little bit of it. But there's some product research related activity I should be doing as an e-commerce entrepreneur. And there's some sourcing. I got to acquire the inventory somehow, get the inventory. So maybe... The product research is simplified for your print on demand business and the sourcing, you're figuring out which print on demand supplier you're going to go with because you got to create the product and then put it onto or superimpose it onto a t-shirt, hat, mug, phone cover case, whatever. So that sourcing part of it may be more simplistic, but it's still part of the journey because you got to turn that particular product into a listing. So there's like a cycle that happens. It goes from sort of the product research to the sourcing to the listing to the fulfillment and or shipping and that cycle just rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat you create the product you find the product you source the product you get the product listed you get the then somebody buys it you ship it to the customer or somebody else ships it to the customer that's part of the journey so these are all things that we're going to talk about that you should have an activity associated with it every single week. Now, there's some other pieces that are part of that journey. Like you should probably be doing some level of customer service throughout the week. You should probably be doing some level of administrative tasks, checking your stats, checking your numbers, other types of things that you may need to do depending on your business model. So those are activities. You may not be doing as much of it, but you're going to be doing something, even if you only do it once a week. All of this is par for the course. So when you're building that schedule, when you look at that draft schedule that's in the middle of the download, that is what I'm talking about. You're building out a template of I'm going to do some level of product research. I'm going to do some level of sourcing. I'm going to do some level of creating listings and I'm going to do some level of sending stuff to my customers or I'm going to just double check to make sure they got it. OK, and I got to do this throughout the week. Rinse and repeat. And then all the other stuff that's extra you know, administrative and customer service, part of the journey. So look at that template. That, that's the purpose of the template is to figure out when am I going to be doing these things? Now, as an e-commerce entrepreneur, this is not the only thing that you do. <laughs> you also maybe have a pet that you take care of, or maybe you have kids that you take care of, or maybe you're newly married, or maybe you have a full-time job that's terribly demanding. Like you have other stuff that's happening in your life. And so what I have found over the years is that people have a hard time balancing 
work and business, like their life and their work and their business. And so when they can't figure out how to balance all of those plates, because your e-commerce business is one plate, so you're a juggler, and then your family is another plate, you're a juggler, and then maybe, you know, the the pet that you have is highly demanding. And so that's another plate. And then you have, you know, maybe a job and that's another plate. And all of these plates are in the air. Maybe you're have a commitment. So you're part of some club or some group. And so maybe you're the leader of that. So that's another plate. So before you know it, you're juggling like six, seven, eight plates in the air and one of them falls. And maybe the one that falls is your e-commerce business and you give up. So the goal of, doing the weekly planning session is to help you to build a schedule so that you can figure out how to balance the plates and keep the plates in the air. Okay. That's the goal that they don't all come crashing down because being an entrepreneur requires you to spend time in your business. And then you feel guilty and you feel like you're neglecting your family or your spouse or your spouse makes you feel guilty or whatever the case may be. And there's this whole, wow, I'm trying to build this business. I'm trying to build a future. And then it just becomes something else. So when you're building the schedule, we're not just going to build a schedule for the business in a vacuum. We're going to build all the other pieces of our life around that schedule, or we're going to build our life and then incorporate our business into it somehow. And that is part of the weekly planning session as well. We want to include everything else that happens in our life. Okay. So trust me, if you are like, that is so me. Just know that I know what you're talking about because every week it is always a balancing act for me personally to say, okay, how do I manage all of this and everything that I have going on? How do I manage it and make sure that everything that needs to be a priority is a priority in my life? So we're going to go through that process. So the first part of it is building your template. When you build your template, if you got a notebook, you can write this in your notebook. We're going to use a couple of pieces of paper if you're doing a notebook. If you're not going to do a notebook and you want to do this online, you literally can go to, if you have a Gmail account, we can go into Google Sheets. So the way you go into from your Gmail account on the upper right-hand corner is these little nine boxes. I call it the Rubik's Cube. It's not really a Rubik's Cube. But anyway, you can click on it. And if you click on it, one of your options from your Google account, because from your Gmail account, because Google gives you a drive. Everybody has a drive if you have a Gmail account. Is you click on the triangle, the multicolored triangle, like orange, blue, and red, and it is the Google Drive. So click on that. Once you click on the Google Drive, go over to the left hand side of the screen and click on the plus. When you click on the plus on the left hand, upper left hand side of the screen, what you're going to find is a um, option of different types of formats. So one of the formats is a Google Sheet, which is green, and you click on that, and that is sort of an Excel spreadsheet. It's like a giant spreadsheet. So if you're going to use Google Sheets, that's fine. We're going to create one Google Sheet that's going to have two tabs. So in the lower left-hand corner, you have Sheet number one. You're going to click on the plus sign, and you're going to have Sheet number two. On Sheet number one, we're actually just going to put things that we already do. It's sort of our brain dump. Sorry, not already all of them, but anyway, we're going to name sheet number one. So if you left click on it, you can click on rename and call it your brain dump. We're going to dump a bunch of information out of our brain so we can build a really good schedule. On sheet number two, we're going to go through and we're going to rename that the template. Okay. And if you want to create sheet number three, you can call it your actual schedule for the week, but we're going to build the template. So let's go through and let's build the template. Now, if you have a notebook, you can literally write at the top of your page, your brain dump. And so you're going to have a brain dump of three pages. Page number one is going to be things that you already do in your life. And these are things that are important and they are priority. And we want to keep those in place. Sheet number two are things you feel like you need to do in your business. And so you're going to go through and you're going to write at the top of that sheet things that you need to do in your business and or need to do in your life. And then sheet number three is things you want to start doing. You feel like you should be doing in your business and or your life and you're not doing it. So that's what you're putting in the notebook. As far as the spreadsheet is concerned, you're going to create columns. So columns, column number one, column A is going to be at the very, very top, A1. You're going to call that already do. These are things that are you're already doing in your life. They're already happening. They're already established. We're not going to break those unless they're not serving you well. We'll talk about that in just a second. So we're going to list already do. That's column A. 
next to it is column B and C. And on B and C, we're going to say, write the words when, so we can put the day and time. So column A is going to be things you already do. Column B is the day in which you do them. So you write day at the top of that. So in column B, B1, kite day. C1, you're going to write time. That's what you're going to do. And then column D, you're going to write things that you need. So you're going to put need to do. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put the day and the time next to that. So it's going to be D and then D, E, F. <laughs> I have to do alphabet real quick. E is going to be day and F is going to be time. And then the next one, A, G, F, G, sorry, G, H, I. So we're going to do G, H, I now. So G is going to be want to do or should do. Uh, H is going to be day and I is going to be time. If I got those right, fantastic. If I didn't, write in the comments. You got those all wrong, Nicole. But that's on your Google sheet. <laughs> okay. So we're doing a brain dump. Let's talk about the things that we already do. So if you're already getting up every single morning, you're going for a walk or you're already going to the gym or you have time that you dedicate to reading the Bible or meditating or just having that cup of coffee and staring out into your beautiful skyline. And that's time that you feel like serves you well. It helps you to center. It helps you to focus. It helps you to decompress or it helps you to prep for the day. Then write that down, that that is dedicated time that we are not going to touch today. We're not even going to talk about it. We're not even going to look at it. So there are things that you do in your life. Maybe you have Bible study every Wednesday. Maybe you have your girls lunch and get together and it serves you well. It feels, it helps you to feel like you have a balanced life and it's something that you've been doing for years. We're not trying to change your life. Okay. The things that you feel like you're doing on a regular basis that are not serving you well, things that you feel like you're wasting time, like maybe every single day you sit down and you watch Netflix for five hours. I don't know that that's serving you well. So I would not put that as dedicated time. If there's stuff that you're doing that makes you feel uncomfortable, upsets you, bothers you, stuff like that, maybe this is an opportunity for you to evaluate. This is something I do every single week. I don't like it. I don't want to do it anymore. So maybe you figure out how not to do it anymore if it's something that you really need to remove from your life. If it causes you stress, pain, or doesn't serve your well, your life well, or doesn't contribute positive to, positively to your life, you should probably stop doing it. OK, so you need to address those things. And we're going to fill up that column A right below that. We're going to start listing things that we already do that are things that we are that are we are committed to doing. These are part of our routine. And these are things that are positive contributions to our life and not negative contributions to the life. So that's what you're adding in column A. So you're going to start just doing a brain dump, start listing, 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 going all the way down that column and just list a bunch of stuff that you already do. and then. If you're already doing it and you have a dedicated day and time in which you do it, write down the day in which you do it and write down the time. If it's something you do every single day, write down every day and then write down what time you do it. So an example would be going jogging. And if jogging is something you do every single day and you do it at six o'clock in the morning and you write down every day, it's on your schedule. It's something you're not going to change. We're going to keep that routine because it's good for you and it serves your life well. If Having a five-hour phone call with your mother-in-law is something that causes you a lot of stress and angst and you have to do it every single day. I'm thinking you need to figure out how to do something different in that spot because you literally could be using that five hours to go make some money. So that's all I'm saying here. Figure out the things that are not serving you well and these are things you probably won't change. Don't put them on the list. <laughs> okay. The next column is we're going to go ahead and start putting in things you need to be doing. So I mentioned a bunch of stuff that you should be doing as a seller. As a seller, these are things you should be doing. So things that you should be doing as a seller, let's just talk about them. You probably should be doing some level of sourcing. That's advanced sourcing, you know, thinking about the upcoming holidays, upcoming events, seasonal stuff, you know, and sourcing replenishables or consumables, going out there and getting those particular products. So sourcing is like acquiring the inventory. OK, not the research part of it, the acquisition of products. So the replenishables that you need to restock, consumables, wholesale, drop shipping. Um, looking for your drop shipping opportunity if you're a drop shipper. So those drop shipping products, acquiring those products, or at least establishing an account with those drop shipping suppliers, um, those private label products, like what are the things when it comes to sourcing 
that you should be doing, but maybe you're not doing as much of it. I'm sorry, you need to be doing, but you're not doing it. Okay. So whatever your e-commerce method is, if you haven't figured it out yet, just know that there's going to be a sourcing component to it. Okay. Um, research. That's product research. Something you have to do before you buy the product. You need to do just a smidget, just a touch of research. <laughs> for some things, you're going to do a lot, a deeper dive on research, but for others, you're not. Like I'm going to give you a simple example. So I have a couple of different apps on my phone and maybe one of them, I got a discount for, you know, um, what's today? Today is Saturday. Um, so I have the Dollar Tree, not Dollar Tree, Dollar General think about it dollar general yellow app on my phone and so i know dollar general you buy 25 products you get five dollars off so that's a coupon and i know that from that standpoint what are the products like what should i be using that 25 dollars so i can get the five dollars off so i can pay 20 dollars, which is going to increase my roi so i'm going to go out to dollar general do a little bit of product research to figure out where am i going to spend that 25 dollars okay so I'm going to do just a little bit of product research, okay? Figure out what are the products I can buy to get that extra $5 off. Or maybe I'm going to do some product if I'm doing retail arbitrage or online arbitrage. Um, print on demand, I might go out there and do some research just a little bit on what are the print on demand, the words and products that people are searching for for Christmas, just so I have an opportunity to develop and design those particular products to create listings. So again, doing just a little bit of research. If you're not doing that, that's probably something you need to be doing as an e-commerce seller. So you want to write down the things you need to be doing. It could be doing product research. It could be listing research. It could be keyword research. Again, are you doing these things in your business? If you're not, you probably need to be doing them. How much you need to be doing them, we'll figure it out based on your uh, e-commerce model, but you probably should be doing these things. Listings. All right. I've said all along, if you are an e-commerce seller, you got to create listings. So if you're not creating listings, you're not an e-commerce seller. Okay. You're just not. <laughs> now, if you're selling a product that just sells over and over again and the listing already exists, fantastic. There might be some other listing opportunities, like maybe by uh, finding something that is a great complement to your product or, you know, something you can bundle together, but that's a different discussion. Listings have to exist in the universe, even if it's a singular listing. So are you creating listings on a regular basis? Are you checking your listings? Are you optimizing your listings? You should have some level of listing related activity. So is it something you need to do or something you're already doing and you randomly do it and just be put into the want to do? I want to get better at this listing thing. Then go put it in the want column. Okay. Shipping. As a seller, you should be shipping something to a customer or getting something to a customer. So, you know, if you're doing digital downloads, like that, there's an automated part of that. So when somebody buys it, it automatically emails, but you still got to make sure you attach it and you want to make sure the email's received. So the point is whether you are physically shipping it yourself, there's an integration or automation part of it, the product has to get to your customer. So there should be some level of verification and or auditing going on if you're not physically doing it yourself. Are you currently confirming whether or not the shipments make it to your customer? Because there's nothing like getting 200 sales and then you get 100 chargebacks because those customers claim they never got their product. That's because you're not double checking. So is it something you need to be doing or something you want to start doing in your business or get more consistent about in your business? So you're either going to fill in the need columns or you're going to fill in the want or should be doing columns. Um, administrative tasks. There's a lot of administrative tasks that we all should be doing in our business. And I'm not saying you do them every single day. There might be certain times of the month in which you do them or certain quarters in which you do them. But there's these are administrative tasks. Some of them you should be doing every week and some of them you should be doing daily and some of them you should be doing monthly and some of them you should be doing quarterly. So. When it comes to administrative tasks, there's like platform reports, filing taxes, account recon banks reconciliation, balancing your budget, creating a budget, tracking expenses and receipts, um, ordering inventory, checking for expiration dates, auditing your inventory, creating standard operating procedures if you got stuff outsourced to a VA, um, reviewing and uh, we're adjusting products. I mean, even if prices, even if you're using like an automated price adjuster tool, 
you still should be checking to make sure things are doing what they're supposed to be doing just in case because i'm telling you software has glitches sometimes software does not always 100 percent work like it's supposed to and sometimes there's upgrades to software things happen so just don't assume that all the stuff you have on autopilot is working as it should every once in a while you need to check in just to make sure things are going the way that you want them to um, then um, analyzing data, reviewing stats. That's not the inclusive list. The point is, hopefully some of this is jogging your thoughts and your memory. And so you can figure out what it is that you feel like you should be doing in your business. Okay. And so under administ like administrative tasks, are there some things you need to be doing? Put those things into the need column. Are there things that you do, but you don't do it as often as you should, that you go in the want or should column. Customer service, handling customer questions or responding to customer questions, dealing with returns, refunds, and reviews. Like, are you going out there and double checking? If you got some bad reviews, do you actually go out there and look a couple of times a week for reviews or feedback? You know, early in the journey, depending on what type of product you're selling and whether or not you're running ads to it, like reviews are critical. And so you want to respond to those quickly. Whereas maybe it's something that's been up and listed for a long time. You don't get a lot of reviews and a lot of feedback, but maybe there should be a process to try and get more reviews. Again, are these things that you need to be doing in your business or things that you already do and you just want to tweak it and get better at it or fix it? Then education. Education is an unsung hero. I think everyone drops the ball on education. And sometimes people go overboard on education. They don't appreciate it or they go over the top. Two different ways of looking at this. One is that people feel like I got to have all the answers before I get started and I'm not going to do anything until I have all the answers. So until I have all the answers, I'm not going to do anything and I'm just going to be a sponge and I'm just going to learn, 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 and never execute. Okay. Or after learning for eight years, I'm finally going to execute. That's eight years that you should have pulled the trigger. You should have done something before now. Okay. Then there's the other side where they don't appreciate the fact that this is something that can actually make them more money. It's an investment that's worth it. So an example might be a person that is really good at their e-commerce business. But the one thing that they don't do is they don't step back and kind of learn how to optimize their listings better. So what if, what if, what if every single week you invest one hour in one skill that you want to develop or improve? so that that way you can gradually get better over time. What if the month of October, one of the things that I wrote on my list was get better at listing optimization. So every single week for the month of October for one hour, I am going to work on getting better at optimizing my listings. I'm going to learn something, do something, whatever, so I can get better at optimizing my listings. That is the goal and the objective. At the end of the month of October, I have now gotten better. That work of investing at least one hour every single week, that's four hours for the month, that could change the rest of my Q4. It could change what happens in my business in November, and it can also change what happens in my business in December because my listings will be better. That will cause me to get more eyeballs and more traffic. That can also cause me to get more sales. Thereby, I get to make more money. That's the whole point. So when I'm not asking or saying that you need to invest a boatload of time in these activities. What I'm saying is you need to invest a little bit of time and there should be committed time in which you invest in getting better at something. And the maximum is at least one hour a week. Get better at one thing, not 20 things, not 50 things, just one singular thing. Focus on, you know, getting better at listings for one hour, 100% focus on that. So do you have dedicated education time in your schedule? It could be 30 minutes. Do you have dedicated education time to learn one thing to get better in your e-commerce business? Yes or no. If you don't, you should. At least 30 minutes, no more than one hour every week. Then marketing and traffic and related activities. So maybe, again, we're filling in the I already do, I need to start doing, or I want to start doing. You're filling in these. I'm just trying to give you ideas. You don't have to write down everything that I just said. These are just things to help jog the memory and go, yeah, these are, I should be doing this. Or yes, I am doing it, but I'm not doing this as often as I should. So are you sending your listings? Right now is the perfect time to send your listings through Pingler and Ping Farm and other pinging software. 
send your listings through so you can get more traction and more traffic on your listings organically? Are you sharing your listings on social media? Do you have a process to do that? If you're not doing that, maybe that's something that you should be doing or maybe something that you need to be doing or maybe it's something you already do or maybe there's no value in it for whatever method of e-commerce you're doing. I don't see how it could not be any value in it, but again, um, you know, doing blogs for some people, they do blogs to drive traffic, paid ads, paid campaigns, sales, uh, clearance, discounts, all that type of thing. Email marketing, video marketing. Are you doing any level of email and or video marketing? If you have a specific product, like we created a YouTube channel for it, or have you created any YouTube videos? Or have you done any TikToks? Have you done any Instagram reels? Like creating videos. Do you, have you built a list? Are you capturing names and email addresses so that you can market to them for Black Friday? This is that time you should be thinking about that stuff, okay? If you didn't think about, really, if I'm going to be honest, you probably should have been thinking about it two months ago, if not three months ago. But again, if we're right where we are, and that's okay, depending on your e-commerce method and model and what products you're selling, that may make sense for you. Um, optimizing your listings. This is a good time to start optimizing your listings, connecting with influencers. Again, getting more traffic and traction to your listings so that you can get more sales, doing promotions, coupons, and sales. So again, things to drive more traffic to your products. So I just kind of like gave you a whole bunch of stuff to think about. All these things may not apply to you based on your e-commerce method or your model. And some of them may, and some of them may not. But you're filling in those columns. Once you fill in the columns, when typically, if these are things you already do, which day and time do you normally do that? So go fill that in in your columns or go fill that in on your sheet. And then if you don't want to say a specific time, like I just do it in the mornings, I always go work out in the mornings or I always go whatever in the afternoons, then you can write down that you just do it morning, afternoon, and evening. Some people don't like to be hard pressed for a dedicated time. It stresses them out. Like, what if I miss that time? Okay, don't be stressed out. Relax. Let's just say a window. <coughs> and so maybe your window, you know, is these are the things I do in the morning. These are the things I do in the afternoon. These are the things I do in the evening. But you're going to go fill in those other two columns that are next to the columns that you wrote before. And on your spreadsheet, you're just going to fill in the day and the time. Then as you are thinking, looking at this list of things that you just did this brain dump on, some of these things are going to be what we call mini habits or mini goals. These are things that either you're working to build up to, to get more consistent. And so you just, if it's something that's in the should do, then the way that you implement those should do or want to start doing lists is that you gradually implement those. I'm going to go back to listings just to make it easy. Maybe you list um, your random, your haphazard about creating listings. You create two on Wednesday and then you create seven on Saturday and the rest of the week you don't create them. And you want to get more consistent about that because let me just tell you, all the platforms, all of the selling platforms like new listings. Okay. They love to optimize our love to read new listings, the spiders crawl across the web websites and they just, new listings are good for you. Okay. So one of the things that you could be doing is that you could, um, in order to get more consistent, maybe what you do is you establish a mini goal of, I'm just going to create one new listing a day. That's it. Nothing extravagant, just one new listing a day consistently for the next 30 days. Okay. Or one listing a day for the next week. And then week two, I'm going to do two listings a day, no matter what. And then week three, I'm going to do three listings a day, no matter what. And then week four, I'm going to do four listings a day, no matter what. So I can gradually get to my goal of whatever that happens to be. If it's five listings every single day, 10 listings every single day, you could work up to it gradually. What you're doing by using many habits or many goals is that you are at least being consistent about the action, the activity. I am going to create a listing no matter what. Not saying how many, maybe I'm just doing the minimum required just so I can build up the habit of consistency around creating listings. That's one way to do it. Another in your personal life, again, we like to make sure you're including your personal life is maybe you say that you need to get up and you need to get more exercise. So maybe your mini habit or mini goal is I'm going to go and walk every single day. Maybe you're random about it right now and you want to get consistent. So one way to do that is again, going through the process of no matter what, maybe I'm just going to walk for 10 minutes today, no matter what. 
every day consistently. And then I gradually build up to, I'm going to walk for 30 minutes or an hour, whatever that happens to be. But you do it every day for a week and then you increase the number to maybe 15 and then you do that every day for a week and then you get to 20, 25. And so you eventually get up to that goal of 30 or whatever it happens to be, 45 minutes. So it's building the habit of consistency around the thing and then gradually increasing the amount of time that you do that or the amount of volume, whichever one. Habit stacking or routines. Maybe you have a routine around creating listings, but it's so cumbersome that it just kind of demotivates you. You're not interested in creating listings. It's just become so hard because of the fact that it's you just don't do it well. So what I always like to do is just reevaluate what the routine is and then maybe reorganize the routine within itself. So habit stacking, putting things in logical sequential order that make the most sense. If I'm doing retail arbitrage, let's say I do retail arbitrage on Friday and then on Saturday I'm listing. And so when I sit down on Friday, on Saturday to list, maybe my stuff is all over the place. I got one bag in the kitchen, one bag in the kids room and one bag in my office. So now I got to walk around and go get all of them. Well, that's time wasted because if I say I'm going to be listing from one o'clock to two o'clock, I've wasted time by going somewhere else. All of your stuff should be in one room. So let's start with that. That's a routine that you need to change. You need to say, when I buy my inventory, I'm going to go put all of it in my office. So it's all located in one spot. Okay. Then the next thing is maybe you have to go through and take your pictures. So then you find all your inventory. Then you go take the picture. You got to take the tags off of it. You got to go clean up the whatever. And you got to get the pictures. So that process takes time. And you're like, okay. That's one more thing I got to do. So that stops me in the listing process because I don't want to do a sit down and list, list, list. So it's slowing you down. So maybe what you do is when you acquire that inventory, when it, you protect, drop it off in your office, you take 10 minutes to clean up that inventory and take the pictures right then. Or maybe you take the pictures while you're in the store because there's a lot of cool apps that will actually allow you to clean the background of the product right then. Okay. So something to think about. All right. Then the next thing is, is that you got to stop and you got to do, do some keyword research or you got to read the box of the thing that you just bought. Now you slow down. So basically what is happening is you're stopping and starting, stopping and starting, stopping and starting over and over and over again. And so at the end of that one hour that you dedicated to listing, you only got two listings up because you stopped and started so much. So some of the things that you can do is you can get more strategic about when you're sourcing you know, maybe take the pictures then, maybe add the inventory right to your back office then. Maybe you, there's a bunch of different things you can do to streamline that process so that instead of getting two listings up in one hour, maybe you get 10 listings up in one hour because you've improved the process. All right. Dedicated time blocks. Maybe you're really random about when you actually work in your business or maybe you're really random about when you do whatever you do with your family or your friends or your kids or your pets or whatever. Maybe you need to get a little more consistent around that. Maybe you need to commit to time blocks in which you do these certain things, whatever that happens to be. So if you're going to work in your business, hold on just one second. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. So if you're going to work in your business, instead of saying, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm going to maybe work in my business in the mornings. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to maybe work in my business in the afternoons. Maybe you get a little more routine and a little more consistent on when you're going to work in your business. So you block off or you have dedicated time that says, no matter what, every single day, Monday through Friday, I'm going to work in my business in the mornings. So then now you know you have an established morning routine and you schedule doctor's appointments after that. And you make sure that... Everything else that you need to do in your life, whether it's meal prepping for the day because you work from home or you lit, you know, you don't go out or anything else, sourcing, whatever. You do all of that activity in the morning so that maybe in the evening that time is dedicated for your family. So, again, that is something that you have to look at as you get ready to build out this schedule. Are you doing things randomly or do you have a method or a routine for those things? And then some people don't like time blocks. Some people don't like dedicated time in which they do certain things. So maybe you're going to create a checklist or a to-do list. And that's okay. Create a checklist or to-do list. Sometimes having a checklist or to-do list makes it 
you feel like you're gaining momentum in your day. When you check things off and it's done, that's one less thing on your list. And so people maybe like to operate that way instead of using time blocks. I prefer time blocks, but again, having a checklist of activities so you can just check them off. And I say, I'm going to work in my business from eight o'clock until 12 o'clock. During that eight o'clock to 12 o'clock, here's the checklist of 10 things I need to get done. And then maybe you have a checklist for the rest of your day, checklist for your kids and checklist for the rest of the things that you have to get done, whatever it is, depending on what you do and what your business is and or um, other activities you engage in. So Again, as you look at this list, this brain dump that you did, some of them are going to fall into different categories. Some of them are going to be part of a checklist routine. Some of them are going to be part of a routine routine. Some of them are going to be part of habit stacking. They're going to be part of something. And some of them are going to be measurable goals. So um, you can create a smart goal for different things. It's uh, a smart goal is something that is specific, measurable, attainable, and or achievable, um, relevant or relatable and time bound. So an example would be every day I'm going to create five new listings between one o'clock and two o'clock. And that's what I'm going to do. No matter what, I can check that off every single day, whether or not I did or did not do that. And at the end of the week, if it's a measurable goal, at the end of the week, I should have 25 new listings. If I'm working five days a week in my business, I should have 35 new listings. If I'm working seven days a week in my business, that's completely measurable. And to extend that, that helps me to build my goals for the week. And it also helps me to build my goals for the month. At the end of a month, I should have 100 new listings because of the fact that I'm executing this every single day. So it's measurable and I can determine at the end of the month, do I have 100 new listings or do I just have five? So go through and take all of that stuff that you do that brain dump on and actually break it out and determine, you know, which one of them applies so that you can figure out how you want to address that specific goal or that routine. Now that you have that brain dump, we're going to take that brain dump and we have that information and we're going to convert that to the next sheet over, which is building out the template. In that template, you're going to start organizing. It's like a puzzle piece. And you're going to drag and drop or you're going to figure out where do I plug in all these different activities? Because I do need to include other stuff that I already do in my life outside of my business. Um, You know, things that you might be doing, like going to church or maybe you take your kids to karate class. So that's something you already do. And it's a dedicated time. You know, things that you feel like you need to start doing, like you should be doing meal prepping. I tell you, meal prepping is on my thing. We do it every Saturday from 5 p.m. starting after 5 p.m. Meal prepping, no matter what, because I'm not trying to cook throughout the week. I don't have that kind of time and energy or patience. So I do all my meal prep on Saturday and I cook for the entire week so that I don't have to do it on Sunday. Okay. That's one of the things that makes my life better because of the fact that I committed to that activity. If I don't get to start it at five, I also even start it at eight o'clock at night, just so I don't have to do it on Sunday. And just so I don't have to cook Monday through Friday, because I don't want to cook Monday through Friday. Okay. Then, um, so look at your life and all the things that you do and start organizing where things go. When do you do what by when? These are some of my morning activities. These are my afternoon activities. These are my evening activities. Write out your life. And now you have a template. You're going to use that template as the guide to build your actual schedule. Now, when you build the template, we're going to execute or try to follow this that little template for at least two to three weeks before we make massive changes to it. And at the end of the day, you may end up having or living with four or five or six different templates. I have four different templates. I have one for when my kids are in school, one for when my kids are out of school, one for uh, Q4 and one for when my son is running track. So I follow four different templates. You may have seven. You may have more things going on in your life where you have to make more adjustments. But I like to have that routine because that creates consistency. I have something I can look at and say, this is my window in which I do this. And this is my window in which I do that. And I'm not saying that I'm not being flexible because life happens and you have to be flexible. But what I am saying is when life does happen or I have to make adjustments, I know exactly what I'm supposed to go back to. And I don't have to think about it twice because it's become a habit. So you're going to now go through the process and you have built out your template of when you're going to do what by when. And then from that template, we're going to start playing with the actual schedule. So your third tab is the actual schedule. So for next week, if I say that I'm creating listings Monday, 
uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from one to two, the question becomes, what type of listings am I creating? Am I going to go ahead and create my Black Friday listings? Am I going to go ahead and create my New Year's listings? Am I going to go ahead and create, if I have a specific niche and I'm like, you know, maybe my pet costumes listings, whatever it happens to be, I'm going to be specific on what I am actually listing during that window. Because there's certain things as a seller, when you do this over and over again, you know that certain listings have to be up and running by a certain time, okay? In order for them to get optimized on the different platforms, you know that certain listings have to get up and running. If you're a new seller, you may not know that yet, but over time, as you start to document what you're doing in your business, then it will become evident to you, you know what, I should have created all of my Black Friday listings in the middle of October or the beginning of October so that that way I can start tweaking them, modifying, optimizing, and whatever. You know what? I should have blah, blah, blah. So you're going to start filling in the what. When I say I'm doing research, if I say that I'm doing research between uh, two and three every single day, what type of research am I doing? So maybe Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm doing keyword research, and maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm doing product research. Again, what time of research, if that is the activity, what is the research? If I'm doing product research, what products am I researching? Am I researching, you know, New Year's products? Am I researching Christmas products? Am I researching, if I'm doing print on demand, am I researching wrapping paper designs? Like, what am I researching? What? What am I researching? And then when it comes to keyword research, so if you know the products, if you've already decided what products you're going to sell for Christmas, maybe I'm going to sell pet products for Christmas. So now I'm going to go out there and do keyword research for the pet products in which I've chosen. I have chosen XYZ. So maybe I'm doing dog leashes. So I'm going to go out there and do keyword research on Monday for dog leashes. On Wednesday, I'm going to do keyword research on dog beds. On uh, on Friday, I'm doing going to do keyword research on whatever. So that that way, I create optimized listings. That's the what. So you're committing to the time of two to three to do research, and then you're breaking down what is the what. That's when you build your actual schedule. Okay, You're going to fill that part in. Shipping. So if you're not doing the shipping yourself, if somebody is doing the shipping for you and you have a shipping block or shipping verification or audit or fulfillment block, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it fulfillment. Some people call it shipping. Whatever you want to call it. So the what. If you have multiple suppliers, so maybe you've got 20 different suppliers that you're working with. And you're, you have sales, you're doing print on demand. You got sales coming from all over the place. So maybe Mondays, you check these 20 suppliers. Tuesdays, you check these, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you check these 20 suppliers. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you check these 20 suppliers. So then that way you're always double checking to make sure that your shipments are going out. Therefore, you get to retain the income, income retaining activity. Okay. So <laughs> that's the goal. Or you have to ship stuff out to your customer. So maybe you ship Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe you ship every single day. Depends. Maybe, again, a shipping-related activity. Maybe you're sending it into a fulfillment center or you're sending it into uh, like an Amazon fulfillment warehouse or you're sending it out to Walmart's fulfillment warehouse. Again, you have a shipping-related activity. So Monday, I send my shipments to Amazon. Tuesday, I do my shipments to uh, Walmart. Wednesday, I'm doing shipments to Amazon. Thursday, I'm doing shipments to Walmart. And if that's in your shipping window of two to three or three to four, that is the thing that I'm doing. On Monday, I'm in my shipping window of three to four, I'm sending shipments to Amazon. Wednesday, I'm sending shipments to Amazon. Friday, I'm sending shipments to Amazon. You get what I'm saying here. You're putting in the what. Because you've already said you're going to do shipping. So now you're going to do the specific thing. If you're going to do shipping audit, that's fine as well. And then sourcing and learning and all of those things. So you're going to do, you're going to fill in, take your template and decide what is the actual activity I'm going to do in each one of those blocks or in each one of those windows. Okay. As part of that as well, I want to go back and I want to look at what I had on my monthly plan because this is the last full week in October. So what did I say I was going to try to get done in the month of October as part of this journey, what were the goals that I established and where am I on those goals? Did I get them all accomplished or am I halfway there or I haven't even scratched the surface? And if you haven't scratched the surface, you need to incorporate some of those goals related activities into your weekly plan. Where am I going to plug in those activities or where do they already 
exist and I'm just not executing well. So what were your monthly goals? Go eyeball that and add them to the weekly plan for next week. Also, what's the priority for next week? Because when you look at the monthly plan, there was probably something that you said that the last week in October that you needed to get done no matter what. And that becomes part of the weekly priority. You also want to look at your own personal life. What were the things that you said in October you need to get done so that they're not a stressor for you in November or December, or maybe some things for your job, or maybe some things for whatever you're doing. Like I am part of a nonprofit. There's a bunch of stuff I got to do next week. It's a crazy week for me because we have a fall carnival on Saturday and all of these families are counting on all the work that gets done before they even get there. So it's a crazy week for me. And so you have to determine what the priorities are and write those down. And then what are the habits that you're working to build in the month of October? They were already defined at the beginning of the month. So you're going to carry those forward into next week. These could be habits for your life. They could be habits for your business. Okay? Or they could be habits for something else. So add those to your weekly plan. All of the stuff you can put in the My Econ Planner. We have space for all of it, which is so cool. So that that way you can track those activities and see where you are every single day and every single week. So that you can stay on track and build a more effective schedule. So that's something that you can follow. So as you scroll through the checklist, there's a bunch of great information in here to help you to get focused and get organized in your business. Look at the planner, step through those activities that I've kind of talked through already, and then figure out where they fit in your life. And sometimes you have to rewrite your schedule a couple of times, maybe writing it on a notebook may help you get started. And then from there, you can move it into the planner or you can paste it onto the wall and say, okay, this is my plan for next week. This is what I know I'm focusing on. And again, we're going into Q4. We're already in Q4, sorry. We're going into November. And so we're going, we're next to, next door is Black Friday, Cyber Monday. It's right around the corner. You're one week from stepping into the month that is Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And not to freak you out, like I think we only have nine more Fridays until Christmas. Nine more Fridays until Christmas, okay? So if you haven't got your head in the game, you need to get your head in the game right now. Get organized, put together a game plan for next week so that you can be productive and on point and get the things done that are going to move the needle in your business. Okay? So build that actual schedule. And then once you have the actual schedule, I would read it a couple of times out loud. And then every day, go through in the morning, read your schedule for the day and make sure that you're still on track. Check off the things you got done, track the things that you feel like you need to make some progress on or that you're not as consistent on so that that way you can get those done. And then as you check things off, like celebrate, hey, I got one thing done, I got two things done, I got three things done. Build momentum, not just in your personal life, not just in your business, but also in your personal life. There's things that you wanted to accomplish in your personal life as well. Things you want to start doing, things you want to stop doing. And so build that schedule to accommodate all of those changes as well. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you use this to help you to make progress in your business and in your personal life. I hope you use this to build a highly productive schedule for next week and also a schedule that's actually going to build on top of the schedule the following week so that as you start to build your business, build that consistency, you build a routine that helps you, that's sustainable long term, and that helps you to make progress in your business it helps you to become profitable over time. This is the time to wish you, this is the money grab time. This is the time to make all the money. So jump in, the water's fine, build your schedule for next week. And then we're going to build a schedule for the week after that. We're going to build a schedule for the week after that. I do want to remind you that we do have, uh, we do have a schedule building session on the 29th, which is Saturday and of next week. And then on the 30th, we're doing our monthly plan. So we're going to be building out the plan for October and also seeing where we are in Q4 towards our Q4 goals. And we're going to build out a schedule for a tentative outline for Q1. So don't miss the 30th. So with that, I hope this information is a blessing to you. Please go share this out with somebody else that could use the information. And my hope, my prayer, my wish for you is that today you have a highly productive, extremely focused and very profitable day. My name is Nicole Whitlock. My passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them get focused, get organized, get consistent in their business. If that's you, 
free, feel free to schedule a free 20 minute coaching session with me. And in addition to that, we're still live on Clubhouse. So if you got some questions, you can jump in there, talk to me about your schedule. Let's make it happen. Let's become the millionaires we see ourselves being. With that, I'm going to say goodbye for now. So have an amazing Saturday, guys.